Nana used to always do this thing with a balloon. You put your <laughs> hand here and you're supposed to close your eyes and think that your head is a balloon on the top of your head and it gets higher and higher and she'd talk about this, this sense of where you're just so light and yeah. free. And I got to a point in my dancing where I remember feeling that and yeah, it was the most freeing, exhilarating thing. The children in the street used to dance. This would have been when I was about six years of age. I used to see them dancing there and I used to say to Mum, oh, you know, I would, I would love to, to dance. And then she found out there was a little church hall right at the end of the street. I even remember my costume, my first costume. I was a little soldier, you know, and I had a little hat, a little box hat and a little tunic thing here, yeah, like that. And uh, I was carried around in a split in the stage, I remember that. My mother got me to teach little children in the street. I remember that. So I would have probably come home from school and any days I had free, taught these little children. So we went to stay with Nana up in Malvern and uh, the Mayor of Melbourne was going to select, I think it was about 15 talented dancers between 12 and 14 or something. I got accepted into this group, it's about 12 years of age. Laurel Martin, she got polio after about six weeks. She got polio. So she got another replacement to come in, which was Kira Buslov, who ended up being the arti first artistic director of the West Australian Ballet Company. So anyway, Kira then took me into the National Ballet Theatre in Melbourne. And anyway, when I was 16, I came across to Perth and Kira had already started the, or commenced developing the West Australian Ballet Company. So I went, met, went and met her at where we used to train at the rowing club in Barrick Street. <laughs> and she said, Terry, you'll have to come back again. We're doing a season in six weeks' time. Um, come back, come back. I'm sure it was nearly three weeks, some of those seasons, and they were packed. They were packed those early times. Well, I wanted to teach. I loved, just loved it from the beginning. With the company, of course, we didn't earn a lot of money either at those early days. So it was really just to try to get some income coming in. And I'd actually had, uh, I was pregnant with Sonia at the time. And so I just started up this school and I had six, six students to start with in a little old church hall in Nolamara. And uh, it just gradually grew, the school gradually grew. My uh, dancing with the company got a little bit less after I had my third child and I went to Melbourne for five years with the Australian Ballet School and then I spent five years sort of really teaching internationally and in Monte Carlo in Monaco for three years so I was out of that scene where Sonia, Sonia was starting to then develop into the teaching. I took over the junior school and we were already, uh, at that point, Mum had already established, um, because we used to work in the city, and of course rent started to really go up those late 80s, early 90s, and, and up until then we had huge space, like 1,000 square metres, you know, beautiful, those old buildings in King Street. We really needed somewhere else to go, and that was when we went to the town hall at the town of Vincent, and they were fantastic we sort of took our city branch to, to the town hall and we could use the two studio, you know, the two spaces they had and we set it up. That would have been uh, 91 maybe, 90 even. That little branch started to really develop in the town of Vincent and people were like, oh wow, Charlesworth here. And it was about that time when uh, I took over the school and then I thought, I'm gonna try and purchase something in the town of Inson. So anyway, ended up buying the old Scout Hall up the top. That was 1999. We actually bought that. And then the school's just gone from strength to strength.